Watch Dogs is back with a new hero, a new setting, and of course more dogs. But is all this enough to improve on the original game? My name's James Jarvis, and I'm here with Louise Blaine to answer all of those questions. So Louise, tell us, you've been playing it. What did you actually do in your hands-on? Yeah, so I was dropped in to San Francisco. We were actually we were in a smaller area of it, kind of an enclosed section okay. of the city centre, which is all made up of grids. We still had all the parks and things, but it was a closed off bit. And instead of going for a story, I decided to find out all the different stuff that you could do because I found in the first one that there wasn't actually that much stuff that you could do things like, oh, I can hack, but there was nothing really, you'd walk through loads of grids of empty things. Mm. So I wanted to find out if the world was as rich or richer than the Dullsville in Chicago. And even though it was a closed off area, did you get a sense of how big it was? Yeah, I mean, it really, I mean, obviously it's not San Francisco size, but it was significantly you know, you felt like you were going through a sort of sprawling area. You were going through the different regions of San Francisco. So at some point I ended up at Golden Gate Park. So up there, there's the Palace of Fine Arts, which is quite exciting because I've been there and I did some drone racing there. Nice. And then you could drive, you know, down to Fisherman's Wharf or you could go to Union Square. So everything that you've ever looked at, if you've been to San Francisco or if you've looked at a map or you kind of know that area, it's got distinct parts. So you can explore distinct parts, which is nice. Okay, so you mentioned drone racing. What yep. else is there to do in the things that you found? Okay, so in the world, there's there's drone racing, there's bike racing. There's actually a really interesting little feature called Driver San Francisco, because obviously it would be made like the game. Driver San Francisco, like it's the clever. game. So um, there's uh, missions for that. So actually it's good when you're driving around, it pops up on your map saying such and such is nearby. A Driver San Francisco mission is nearby. You touch the touchpad. I played on PlayStation. Uh, on, on there you touch the touchpad and it sort of showed you where it was and you could join in with that. And because we're in the millennium, you know, we've got you've got your mobile phone again, but it's mm -hmm. nice and big and brightly coloured. And you've got a, a Driver San Francisco app on there. So it's basically like Uber. So you log into that and the person gets into the car. And um, then you can, the person that got into the, I don't know if it's a different person every time. I assume it is. The girl that got into my car was a daredevil. Okay. And she was a, a YouTuber, obviously, because we're really cool. Mm -hmm. And um, you had to drive around and do crazy stunts. And she'd be like, oh, this is great for the video. We'll get loads of views on this. And it was really quite fun. You're sort of screeching around corners and trying to get air. So I think there'll be different ones every time. But that was the one that I found. So how many followers does your channel have? Under a mil so far. But it's climbing. This is going to get tons of views. In terms of other things in the world, so drone racing, um, you can go shopping. I went shopping, which was nice. You can buy loads of hipster stuff, like a Clothes. squirrel jumper. Oh, OK. Well, Marcus has a lot of things. He's the new guy in the game, right? Yes. So what kind of... I guess he's got gadgets this time? He's got loads. So basically... You've got your drone, which obviously you were racing with, but you've got your drone can sneak into areas. So basically you just hit left on the directional pad. The drone appears, flies up. You control that with the analog sticks and it's you can't go too far because you'll be out of range, mm -hmm. but it's quite big. So if you go up to, there's loads of like things around the world where you can pick up different bags of money and different collectibles. There's loads of collectibles. Of course everywhere. there is. Of course it's, it's an Ubi game. There's <laughs> yeah. lots of collectibles. But I got quite obsessed with finding these little areas where the collectibles were, which were secure areas, which you couldn't walk into. Okay. Or you could, but then they'd catch you. So if you go in with your drone, you can scope it out with your drone. And this is what I really liked, actually. So it's like it's a just, mobile camera. Yeah. So you go in with your drone. It's a mobile camera. You can hack stuff. So say someone there's lots of people guns and dogs all guarding something if you then go up make sure they don't see you because they can throw stones at your drone if they see it <laughs> which then automatically sends it back to you um, but if they don't see it you can sort of hack stuff you can uh, get them sort of attracted to an area and then mm -hmm. electrocute them all the things that you could do with the first one but it just wasn't as much fun but it's much more fun now zooming around the sky but if your drone doesn't do it if they see your drone You've got a second chance because you've got this little remote control jumper thing you can use. So it's quite cute, actually. Marcus sort of sits cross-legged and this wee jumper arrives, this little robot. Right. And again, it's got a camera on it and you can steer that into environments too. And I think I only did one of the story missions, but it kind of turns things into giant puzzles. So it's like, how will I get mm. this in? So you can hack grates to let the, the remote control in. Then you can go up that, go through sort of ventilation systems, things like that. And then you can actually actively hack with that. 
You can't actively, you can do some bits with the drone, but you can do a lot more with a jumper, like you can collect stuff. So if you wanted to get into one of those areas and there was a bag of cash, you could literally send in your little okay. remote control guy and get it. So you'd never need to do it. So I think that was actually my favourite part of all of it, was turning these little bits into puzzles that I could do without going into. All right. Well, I guess hacking's quite a big thing in a game, like yes. all about the internet and things. Yeah. You've mentioned hacking with your little drones, but you said something about hacking while driving previously. Oh, yeah. So you can, when you're driving along, previously you could just hit L1 and you could maybe change some traffic lights mm, in the first one. Put but up now, some barriers. Put up some barriers. But now you can, you can still put up some barriers and you can still make sort of um, underground pipes explode, which I did accidentally and it killed myself. It's fine. <laughs> But what you can do is you can hack individual drivers and individual cars. So you just hold L1 and an option will come up in the bottom right of your screen. And I kind of crashed a couple of times I was trying it. But basically, each of your uh, your square X triangle circle will move it in a different direction. So what you can do is you can hack it and be like, I want that to reverse. So even if there's someone driving it, you can just reverse it. Or you can have them swerve in front of you. So there are lots of police chases and things if you mm. get involved in police or, you know, relative factions and things like that so i think later on in the game once you're quite used to that you'll be able to do some pretty spectacular things of sort of yanking cars in front of people and things like that so that was a lot of fun i did it when i was in one of these little enclosed environments there was a car that i just hacked and got to reverse so we just ran over to the guys with guns and, Amazing. Like, and i'll go and get this so it, it's the much bigger toolbox than before and i genuinely didn't even feel like i really experienced half of it i felt like there's going to be a lot more toys to play with all right. Well, I guess then the big question is, is this better than the original? I I already find it much more entertaining. I Because I didn't really play with the story that much, even the characters are just much more appealing. Like, they are silly. They mm. are super millennial. It's going hyper. You know, we have like, we have people with masks with dollar signs lit up in their eyes. Like, everyone is a super ridiculously cool. But at the same time, they're going all out with it you know there's emotes everywhere and there's emojis and everyone can do everything and they've kind of embraced that we're going to be hyper cool and even if you think they're trying too hard it's really fun and it also, feels like this is mainly based on fun whereas yeah. the first game was a bit more serious exactly you've got blue skies you've got san francisco you've got a lot of new toys you've got you know, your main mission is to get followers. Like, everything you do in the world, no matter what you do, gets you followers. Despite the fact that you are, you know, working for DeadSec, which is yeah. meant to be stealthily... An underground organisation. Or an underground organisation that is stealthily taking down this massive conglomerate that is CTOS that's taking over the world and selling information. And But for all that, you need followers. And it's fun. It's silly. It's big. And I'm really interested to see what... It, I mean, at November 17th, we've got a while to go mm -hmm. yet I guess it'll go fast but I'm interested to see what what comes next and for a game that's called Watch Dogs are there any dogs? there's loads of dogs I can't different remember. dogs? different dogs I found a husky I found a German shepherd um, I met a husky and I was patting it and you know Marcus was like oh do you need scritches which was cute and then obviously I accidentally stunned a number of dogs <laughs> on a number of occasions just to see if mm -hmm. they would go to sleep and they just they'll be fine do they go to sleep? JJ they'll be fine did you put them all to sleep? I put them all to sleep Wow. But the dogs will be fine. No dogs were harmed in the making of this footage. All right. Honest. Well, let's leave it there before you <laughs> murder any more animals. Thank you. So thanks, Louise. And for more on Watch Dogs 2, keep it here on Games Radar Plus. Subscribe if you want to.